So let us discuss about the uh, carcinoma of bladder today. And as usual, uh, the cancer of the, of the, the tumor of the bladder is, is divided into benign and malignant tumor. Benign tumors are papilloma. Papilloma are those tumors which uh, you know uh, arise from the epithelial surface. And leomyoma means uh, a benign tumor arises from the smooth smooth muscles. But here we'll be more focusing on the malignancy part. Okay, so see over here. As as usual, malignant tumor of any organ. We classify malignant tumor of the bladder as a primary malignant. Primary means that the malignant tumor arising from the bladder itself and secondary. Secondary means it is arising in other organ, but it does involve the bladder. Okay. <clears throat> so see over here. This is urinary bladder. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is mucosa. This is mucus mucosa muscular layer and outer layer is known as uh, adventitia or serosa or serosa so here whenever we we, we discuss about the malignancy of the bladder <clears throat> the most common variety of malignancy that arise it, 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 it arises from the mucosa that means the epithelial surface of mucosa. Mucosa is lined by epithelium. Okay. Epithelium. So the most common variety of cancer that arises from bladder is from epithelium. Okay. That's why when any cancer that arises from epithelium, we 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 give the name carcinoma right so bladder bladder carcinoma means malignant tumor arising from the epithelial surface malignant tumor arise from connective tissue or you can say mesenchymal tissue that is known as sarcoma okay so it could be a, a Malignant uh, tumor arising from muscular layer known as leomyosarcoma. Leomyosarcoma. Okay. And in, in children, uh, there's a rhabdomyosarcoma uh, arising from the muscular layer. Okay. Primary bladder tumor. Primary malignant tumor of bladder. So basically, it may arise from mucosa or it may arise from the uh, connective tissues or muscular layer. The most common variety is a malignancy that arises from the epithelial surface. Okay, and if you see the secondary secondary bladder tumor, this is urinary bladder. Right. Okay. Suppose we, we are we are talking about the female system. Then female, you know, just behind the urinary bladder. The uterus, okay, and behind that there is rectum, right? So, <clears throat> when any tumor, uh, like mainly the cervical cancer, okay, cervical cancer, that may invade the bladder, see, in female, or uterine cancer can also invade. If a cancer from other organ invade or involve the bladder, then we say it's a secondary bladder tumor, right? Similarly in male, similarly in male, you can see similarly in male, the prostate cancer can involve the bladder. The prostate cancer can involve the bladder or the rectal cancer from behind can involve the bladder. So, so whenever a cancer from different organs involve the bladder, then it is known as secondary bladder tumor. So if you see here, 
we classify the bladder malignant bladder tumor into primary malignant tumor and secondary malignant tumor primary malignant tumor means uh, the, the malignant tumor that arises uh, from the tissue or cells of bladder itself secondary malignant tumor means it arises from the surrounding organs or other organs okay so primary bladder tumor is, is primary bladder malignant tumor is classified as a as a bladder carcinoma and bladder sarcoma so this is bladder this is the serosa or adventitia this muscular layer also known as detrusor muscle detrusor muscle and the innermost layer you can see over here is epithelial epithelium or you can say mucosa mucosa layer mucosa <clears throat> let me draw the mucosa only okay uh, this part magnified <clears throat> mucosa okay has some lamina propria now obviously there's mucosal epithelial surface right and these are lined by a multiple layers of multiple layers of uh, transitional epithelium so the epithelium the epithelium that lines the mucosa is known as transitional epithelium so <coughs> if you remember the entire urinary system is mostly lined by transitional epithelium also known as urothelium urothelium okay. <coughs> so Whenever the cancer arises, whenever the cancer arises from this epithelial surface, they are mostly transitional cell carcinoma. Transitional cell carcinoma. Because the epithelial surface uh, is a transitional cell. Okay, so the, if, if the cancer arises from this epithelial, epithelial tissue, it will be mostly transitional cell carcinoma. Okay, wait for the histological type. I'll explain later on again. Bladder carcinoma, as I already told you, this, this is the primary malignant tumor arising from epithelial surface of bladder, that is a mucosa of bladder, and this is the one of the most one of the most common malignancies, uh, second most common malignancies uh, in urogenital system, first being prostate cancer in 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 male, so very common. This is common than uh, RCC, okay, and if you see. It is common in, uh, in male than female, three times more common. Might be due to habit of cigarette smoking. It's common in, in male, that's why. Okay. Age, uh, like RCC, like other, like other cancers, the common age group is at around 60s, okay, 60, 65 years. And uh, luckily, uh, these cancers are diagnosed mainly at this stage of localized cancer that means <coughs> before they, they they get metastasized uh, we can diagnose it because uh, the most common presentation of the malignancy is is hematuria like other cancers uh, we have genetic factors and environmental factors okay uh, sometime you know uh, the genetic factor prevails and the patient who have a family history of bladder cancer may get bladder cancer in future but mostly Bladder cancer is depends on the environmental factor, just like RCC. Okay. See, uh, environmental carcinogens are more important. Genetic factor, basically those those who have the history of bladder cancer in family, uh, they have uh, two times two times you know higher chance of getting bladder cancer. But mainly, mainly the most important factor is environmental carcinogens and among that the most important one is smoking a cigarette you can see tobacco tobacco in any form tobacco in any form cigarette smoking chewing tobacco snuffing tobacco whatever the form is tobacco consumption is the main cause of bladder cancer why let me explain because somebody has smoked the tobacco okay? smoking or chewing or snuffing 
whatever the root of of intake after the intake carcinogen inside the tobacco obviously will go to the blood right and from there if anything go to the blood it will go to kidney for filtration right it gets filtered into the, into the kidney and then at the end it will come to the bladder the urine with that carcinogen will come to the bladder and it stays there for for a while and these carcinogens you know they start to irritate the bladder mucosa okay and <clears throat> You know, those who smoke, they don't smoke for one day. They smoke for years and years and years. So this, <clears throat> this, this insult of a mucosa goes on for years and years. And, that, and, and at, at the point of time, there will be a mutation in the mucosal cells. Cells of mucosa get mutated, okay? And once they get mutated, now they form cancer. So the agent that causes uh, malignancy uh, after consuming tobacco is alpha and beta naphthalamine. Okay, please remember that uh, chemical. Okay, so see <clears throat> alpha and beta naphthalamine. So it, it depends on duration. If if anyone smokes for longer duration, he has a higher chance of getting cancer. If anyone smokes more cigarette a day than other, then he has a higher chance of getting cancer. So it depends on it directly directly proportional to the number of number of uh, cigarette you smoke and duration of smoking you did okay those who those who smoke they have around two to six times higher chance of getting cancer than than those who don't smoke just like uh, smoking if a person is exposed to other chemical carcinogens like like aromatic aromatic amines polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons so <clears throat> these uh, chemicals are found uh, in factories like uh, textile uh, factories, dye industries, rubber tire industries, petroleum industries. So <clears throat> those those worker who works in these type of industries, if they don't uh, maintain the you know, precautions, like they have to wear masks, they have to uh, wear spectacles and wear long boots, gloves. You know why? Because see, these chemicals may be inhaled, may be ingested, or maybe absorbed by skin so they are at high risk of getting absorption of these chemicals and whenever the chemicals get absorbed in, in, into the system they go to the bladder by a kidney and then they irritate the bladder and causes malignancy the risk factor for transitional cell carcinoma in pelvis in ureter or bladder or ureter is same the only difference is bladder has a higher chance of getting them than other parts okay see this factor lead to chronic inflammation in bladder so as you know as you know the bladder is lined by transitional epithelium okay epithelium but due to chronic inflammation due to chronic inflammation if you remember a term metaplasia metaplasia right so due to chronic inflammation the transitional epithelium is converted to the squamous epithelium why because <coughs> squamous epithelium has a more resistant power than transitional epithelium for irritation and other traumatic experience this is still reversible still reversible but if that agent which is causing metaplasia is not removed still going on then it lead to squamous cell carcinoma i have told you right the most common variety of the cancer is transitional cell carcinoma because transitional epithelium is the epithelium of, of our urinary system but due to the chronic inflammation and the metaplasia you may find a patient with squamous cell carcinoma there are some drugs which are very toxic to the bladder for example, cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide is itself an anti-cancer drug. But the problem of this, this drug is when the metabolite of this drug enters into the bladder, it can cause bladder cancer. So anti-cancer drugs used to treat other cancers can deposit into the bladder and can irritate the bladder mucosa and can lead to bladder cancer. See, for any cancers, some food or some you know, uh, chemicals are a protective one, like vitamin A, C, E, you know, 
these uh, these vitamins and other other antioxidant that is found in the food material can reduce the dna damage okay and the, the fiber diet the vegetables you know uh, <clears throat> the selenium found in uh, found in those nuts like walnut you know sunflower seeds mushrooms these are very good food because these are the food which would provide you good nutrition as well as antioxidant and selenium which all or tries to prevent the dna damage and repair so that does not mean that you will continue smoking and take a lot of uh, mushroom or vegetables or fruits it will not work the the factor that that causes cancer should be stopped and these food has to be consumed <coughs> let me let me just uh, tell you something about cystosomiasis okay cystosome hemato hematobium um, is, is a parasite is a fluke is a parasite this parasite is transmitted through the uh, infected water into the bladder and they start to grow inside the bladder mucosa and the problem of this parasite is they causes chronic inflammation and, and and you know the damage of the bladder they cause bladder contracture they damage the bladder and this is this is the urinary bladder suppose these parasites stays in, inside the mucosa and they start to damage the bladder and whenever the blood is damaged there is chance of calcification in those damaged area you know calcification and the calcification has unique unique pattern uh, they make a linear calcification you know as a line so when you when you take an x ray x ray pelvis okay you will see this linear calcification as a fetal head head of the fetus head of fetus you see the linear calcification linear calcification is seen in x ray and this is uh, this is said to be fetal fetal head sign okay some some strains are common in south asia and south africa but mostly uh, they are found in middle east yes <clears throat> whenever uh, you get a question like uh, working in the chemical industries dye industries rubber industries uh, the most common the, the most common cancer is bladder cancer see <clears throat> you may get a multiple answer here cystosomiasis causes squamous cell carcinoma because uh, cystosomiasis lead to cystosomiasis lead to chronic inflammation smoking obviously it causes tcc okay and uh, tuberculosis has no role in in cancer no role naphthalmine actually if you remember alpha and beta naphthalmine is a toxic agent of cigarette okay same thing so answer is b and c answer is b and c 63 old is male with hematuria cystoscopy cystoscopy shows bladder growth that is saying us blood this is a bladder cancer and on on biopsy on biopsy on biopsy squamous cell was seen so it is not a transitional cell carcinoma it's a squamous cell carcinoma and you have to identify among these uh, risk factor which causes squamous cell carcinoma cigarette smoking causes tcc spv human papilloma virus no role alcohol no role parasitic infestation that is cystosomiasis right cysto so meiasis all are anti cancer drug among these anti cancer drug cyclophosphamide can cause bladder cancer so answer is a you are correct pathogenesis of bladder cancer this is this is epithelial surface this one epithelium okay and uh, this is muscular layer so when there is a insult or irritation of the bladder mucosa by these carcinogens for longer time then it lead to mutation mutation of the dna inside this epithelium you know whenever there is an insult to the to the gene or dna okay, the insult may be by chemicals 
some or maybe by physical agent or virus whatever <coughs> the source is there's a dna damage okay dna damage and the good thing is the dna repair as well the damage and repair goes continuously damage again it will be repaired and that chemical agent if it is still if it's still inside the body then it causes continuous damage and our body will repair it but at a point of time <clears throat> there will be mutation whenever there is a when when the dna is trying to repair uh, at that time there could be mutation in that gene sequence once there's a mutation the cell cell start to grow rapidly grow rapidly because of the mutation in some specific type of gene like like suppression of tumor suppressor gene okay or activation of uh, protongo genes inhibition of uh, apoptosis gene so when these genes are altered uh, then it lead to uncontrolled growth no suppression at all and these type of cell will grow rapidly and forms cancer so here you can see due to mutation in genes uh, there are two type of mutation sometimes the cancer you know sometimes the the these these cancers grow upward if it grows like that it is known as papillary okay papillary that is <coughs> projected from the surface upward and <coughs> Uh, in some other type of mutation, the cancer cell will stay stay inside the epithelium, but it is spread as a flat cancer. See, so this is known as carcinoma C two. <coughs> These are very aggressive cancers. They are flat. Okay, they don't grow upward like like papillary variety. Whatever the variety is, papillary or or flat variety. Later on, if not treated, then it will it will invade the muscle. So it, it, it start as a superficial cancer or, or non-invasive cancer. Later on, it invade the muscle and become muscle invasive cancer. And let me explain one more thing. Uh, whenever these chemicals, uh, you know, um, irritate the bladder mucosa, it irritates the entire bladder mucosa, not only one place. But, but the mutation occurs at a part of the mucosa and the cancer arises from a part, one part. Okay. And if you remove, if you do a surgery of these part, still from the remaining part, the cancer may arise. That's why these are very notorious for recurrence. As you know, the epithelial surface, epithelial surface of a of of a bladder is known as transitional epithelium, which is multilayer epithelium. Okay, multilayer epithelium, transitional epithelium. epithelium carcinogen then <coughs> there is a formation of transitional cell carcinoma the tcc okay <coughs> but if there is a chronic inflammation chronic inflammation which could be due to a uh, stone or chronic uti okay or parasitic in, in infection, then it lead to metaplasia that is converted to squamous epithelium. Okay, and still, if that agent is still is still there, then it, it will be converted to squamous cell carcinoma. So these are two varieties of the two most common varieties of <coughs> of uh, bladder cancer around 90 to 95 percent cases you will find tcc around five percent cases you will find squamous cell carcinoma and very rarely very rarely about very rarely about two percentage you will find another type known as adenocarcinoma about two percentage okay very rarely you are developing the process uh, so many things, you know, get regressed. Uh, they are found in our entire life, but later on they are regressed or absent. Okay, one of the one of the um, one of the um, one of such 
the such thing is known as uracus uracus it is connected to the urinary bladder okay but later on it is it is disappeared if 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 in some patient <coughs> where this uracus still remains actively in the bladder then from this part uh, if the cancer arises then it is known as adeno carcinoma our abdominal wall anterior wall this is umbilicus this is anterior wall okay <coughs> this is urinary bladder okay <coughs> sometimes what happen is due to some congenital anomalies uh, the anterior wall of the abdomen and the anterior wall of the bladder this will be missing absent no anterior wall of the abdomen lower abdomen and no anterior wall of the bladder then you will find a patient like this also with the picture weight you will find the bladder is exposed the bladder the, the posterior wall of bladder is attached to the anterior abdominal wall so the bladder wall the bladder wall is attached to the abdominal wall and you will find <coughs> the mucosa you can see the mucosa of bladder as in part of anterior abdominal wall okay <clears throat> this is known as bladder extrophy and later on they can they can develop uh, adenocarcinoma so let me show you the picture so there are three types transition cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma tcc tcc is the most common variety <coughs> and th these are usually associated with <coughs> with genetic factors and uh, uh, smoking and occupation hazard okay uh, i've already shown you the sometimes the tumor become very flat when as carcinoma in situ sometimes you will find a tumor with some <coughs> elevations known as papillary variety okay <coughs> whatever the variety is the both variety can invade the deeper structure involve the deeper structure if they are just at the epithelial surface layer without involving the muscle we say non muscle invasive non muscle invasive bladder cancer and if they involve the muscle then we we say them as a muscle invasive bladder cancer see <clears throat> regarding squamous cell carcinoma i have already told you this is the second most common variety around 5% is a bladder cancer and associated with chronic inflammation and regarding adenocarcinoma the least common and it is associated with uracil remnant in a congenital anomaly known as bladder extrophy where the <clears throat> the anterior see the see the lower abdominal wall is missing and the posterior posterior wall of the bladder mucosa is exposed directly into the surface this type of defect is left without treatment for longer time then the mucosa may be you know uh, is irritated for longer time may lead to malignancy and if the cancer arises from extrophy bladder it will be adenocarcinoma so regarding spread of bladder cancer as you know the spread could be a uh, local spread spreading to the surrounding structure or that could be a distant spread or metastasis as you know uh, in female we have just behind the bladder and urethra there is a vagina and uterus okay so whenever there is a bladder cancer it may involve the vagina it may involve the cervix it may involve the uterus obviously it can involve the lateral pelvic wall also if it is spread to surrounding area but in male okay uh the rectum is just behind the uh, bladder uh, bladder so a, a bladder a bladder malignancy can spread to rectum spread downward to the prostate or obviously it can spread to the lateral pelvic wall as well okay what about the what about the distant metastasis and this is bladder cancer okay uh, the bladder cancer may spread by a lymphatic system or it can spread by a hematogenous route if it if it is spread by hematogenous route as you know the common site would be it may go to the lung it may go to liver okay lung is a very common site okay 
it may go to the bones or it may go to the brain you know there is a cancer bladder if it if it follows if it follows the lymphatic route it will first go to pelvic lymph node remember that and from there if you remember my lecture in rcc it goes to cisterna kylie which receives the lymphatics from the intra-abdominal organ and from cisterna kylie it is continuous as a thoracic duct thoracic duct and that thoracic duct opens into the junction between subclavian vein and interjugular vein so the cancer will follow the lymphatic uh, thoracic duct pathway and just before entering into the system these are there are some lymph nodes known as left supraclavicular lymph node and these are highly highly you know susceptible to in involve these lymph nodes that's why in any abdominal cancers we always check supraclavicular lymph node that is the lymph node just above the clavicle very much important if they are involved if, if they are hard and large and non tender then we suspect the cancer of the bladder has went there and once they are involved the name is we, we say varicose gland the lymphatic of leg actually it drain into the pelvic lymph node okay remember that pelvic lymph node so whenever there is a cancer involving the pelvic lymph node remember that these lymphatics of the leg will not drain into the abdomen leading to lymphedema edema of leg so leg may be swollen if the pelvic lymph nodes are extensively extensively involved then either one side leg or both side leg can be edematous answer this question please the most common variety of uh, bladder carcinoma is tcc or transition cell carcinoma accounting from 90 to 95% of cases right <coughs> see urolithiasis means stone stone can cause squamous cell carcinoma persistent urethral causes adenocarcinoma cystosomiasis causes squamous cell carcinoma polyp no role smoking causes tcc so bladder extrophy is a situation where the anterior abdominal wall and the anterior wall of bladder is missing such that exposing the posterior bladder wall into the into the environment and this causes adenocarcinoma so bladder extrophy is the answer